Josh and Severe Weather here. Happy Tuesday to you. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, the tropics remain quiet this week. Not a lot to talk about in the Atlantic. The Pacific, on the other hand, has been super busy with three storms in the vicinity of Hawaii and one major storm bearing down on Japan. So you're probably wondering yourself, why even bothering to look at this? Well, we are starting to see a signal for some changes coming in the Atlantic, and we now have an area of possible development over the central Atlantic that the National Hurricane Center has highlighted. Uh, but that's not going to be it. We are heading into September next week. Things are likely to ramp up pretty quickly. So that's what I'll be talking about in the first portion of my video. Prepare for a parade of storms here. Once one of them breaks through, we will likely see more. These two areas are what we're monitoring next week for development. The first one uh, looks like it will probably impact the Caribbean islands here sometime towards the middle of next week, Tuesday through Thursday. And that one has the potential to become Francine. That is the area we're watching now. There's another one behind it that has a chance to develop as well. And right now, a lot of uncertainty on that. Uh, so those are the two we're going to be watching. But we also may see some what we call homebrew. We've got a boundary kind of sitting out over the uh, northern Gulf, an upper level low near Texas now. And that's going to hang out into next week near the Carolinas. The waters are warm. The wind shear is high right now. But over time, we may see at least something form. I don't think a big, big storm, but something that could bring more rain and maybe spin up into a depression or storm. So these are probably the two areas to keep a closer eye on, but it's going to be probably at least another week. Here's a look at the rest of the world, and everything you can see is in the Pacific right now, a trio of storms around Hawaii. Uh, the first one, Hona, is a tropical storm and weakening. That impacted the Big Island over the weekend. The next one is Hurricane Gilma, which is weakening now, moving into cooler waters. Its remains will bring some moisture into Hawaii towards the weekend. And the third one is Tropical Storm Hector, which may develop a little bit more, but should start to run into some cooler water. And in the Western Pacific, we are on alert here in southwestern Japan with very strong typhoon uh, Shan Shan taking aim here at southwestern Japan in the next 24 hours. We'll get back to the Pacific in a few. Let's look at the Atlantic here. We now have a disturbance uh, that could form and a 20% chance of development between now and next Tuesday morning. Uh, right now, conditions are not favorable for development, but as we head into the second part of the week and into the weekend, things may start to turn. And by early next week, uh, a decent chance I think we're dealing with a tropical storm moving into the islands by next Tuesday. A look at the rest of the Atlantic shows that things are not very conducive for development right now. Uh, as we zoom in a little bit closer, we can see the Gulf of Mexico is shut down. There's an upper level low spinning across the hill country of Texas. Uh, southerly flow sending moisture into the coastal bend of Texas, which was hit by barrel early last month. And the rest of the Gulf, you can see there's a lot of wind shear from uh, southwest to northeast here, which is uh, keeping any kind of development from happening here and will continue to be the case as we go through the remainder of this week at the very least. In the Atlantic, we do have a boundary that's stalled off the coast. Uh, area thunderstorms we're tracking moving through Ontario into the northeast. Uh, a lot of heat building up here. So on top of the ridge, we're going to see active weather over the next several days. And that will protect us from any kind of tropical trouble. Uh, it'll lead to high heat in the ridge here. We need the rain in Ohio, West Virginia, Kentucky, Virginia. It's very hot today and tomorrow. Uh, we will finally see some storms in the coming days here. But those are going to move offshore. And we'll have a boundary next week that we'll have to keep an eye on across the Gulf Stream. For the time being, though, things are pretty quiet. Uh, we do have a little bit of a spin up here southeast of Bermuda, which is right here. That is unlikely to develop. You can see southwesterly flow, which is going to create wind shear, just not a lot of, uh, in, of an environment that's conducive for development. Now, in the central Atlantic, things are not yet to the point where we have to worry about anything, but... As time wears on, this area does need to be watched. Uh, it's going to take some time to consolidate into anything, but the general motion takes it into a spot where things could get more conducive for development later this weekend, right through Labor Day next Monday. And if you're in this area, definitely something we need to be watching more closely. I could see how this became Tropical Storm Francine. A little bit too soon to say if it could become a hurricane, uh, but certainly has the potential to become a tropical storm. And behind it, just a massive wave getting ready to move off the African coast in a couple of days. Uh, that would be potentially 12 to 13 days away from any major land impact. So a lot of time to watch it. It may not even survive, but as I'll show you in a little bit here, 
um, we do have something to watch as it gets into this region and here. Uh, the reason things have been quiet, we've just had a little bit too much uh, easterly wind shear. Uh, the water temperatures are very warm, so that's certainly not a problem for us. Uh, but the upper level environment certainly does not support anything for the time being. And in addition, not only do we need low wind shear, but we need significant moisture. And this uh, African dust that has kind of plagued the main development region this month has kind of put things in check here. Now, as we look into the future here over the weekend and next week, uh, you can see the plume spreads out, thins out, and uh, indicates that we're going to head into a more of a moisture environment, one that is more favorable for development. It's not 100% perfectly favorable, uh, but it will certainly uh, be less limiting of a factor for anything that does come off of Africa as we head to next week. The other thing I talked about a few days ago is the wind shear here coming off of Africa, very strong easterly wind flow. And this is uh, allowed for um, waves to come off and just get sheared apart, not really form into anything more significant. Now, the climate model, and it could still be wrong, um, does show that the trend as we head towards next week is for the wind shear to lessen and then pretty much go away uh, by the time we get to the week of the 10th of September. In fact, uh, much of the main development region here into the Caribbean, Southern Gulf, and Southwest Atlantic is going to be pretty favorable for uh, a wind shear um, setup here, very low wind shear with respect to average. As you get into the Southern U.S., that wind shear picks up, but most of our storms form in this area, so that wouldn't even be a factor until a potential landfall. As we move on into the end of September, you could see the wind shear with respect to average uh, continues to slowly reduce. And as a result, um, just we really can't write off the season right now. The end of September could be extremely active. Our peak may be happening later this year uh, due to the fact that wind shear is just super low with respect to average. Until it gets back to where it is here now, which is not being shown in any of our forecasts through the first week of October, um, then we definitely need to be on the lookout for a parade of storms. So again, I don't wanna to get too far ahead. Uh, let's worry about the issues at hand now, but you can see uh, the possibility of a tropical depression here at the end of the week is starting to come up a little bit in the central Atlantic. Also a tiny bit here off of the African coast as well by the weekend. It's not a great chance, but we do have two trackable features here uh, by the beginning of next week. This is next Monday, Labor Day in the United States, September 2nd. Uh, here's the third, when we may have a feature to, to be watching here, maybe a tropical storm. And this is uh, the 3rd of September. Uh, here's the next one behind it. And right now you can see not showing really any decent chance for anything to form off of the Southeast coast or in the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, there have been some hints that something could form, but not a lot of support at this point. So. The farther out we get into time, the more disagreement the model ensemble or the ensemble members will show us. And as a result, these chances come down. That doesn't mean there won't be anything. It just means that confidence is a little bit too low. Uh, but you know what? I, I think we are going to see at least one system out of this, if not two. Here's the GFS ensemble. Starts to show potential as we get towards uh, next uh, Monday night and Tuesday near the islands. The number of ensembles showing something continues to climb later next week. There is a signal in the Western Gulf. There's not much of a signal, though, over the Eastern Atlantic, at least for the time being. Uh, so something that develops sooner is going to try to recurve, kind of like we saw with Ernesto. But that is not a guarantee at this point. A lot can still change. And there are some members that take this into the Gulf of Mexico, albeit fewer members. The European ensemble shows something similar, but has... More of a spread here and more members that may try to threaten Florida, Cuba, or even the Gulf of Mexico, not until at the earliest later next weekend. Again, that is 12 to 13 days away and quite a bit's going to change. So nobody can say for certain what will exactly happen. All that we know is that there's a decent amount of model support for something to form in this region. Uh, if we take a look at the European ensemble, just the general members here, you can see um, a little bit of support here in the Western Gulf for something to try to sneak up and spin up, but nothing too strong. And this wouldn't be until next Sunday. So it should stay wet for the holiday weekend in upper Texas, Louisiana, maybe into Mississippi and Alabama. But you can see here more support for something to form here in the central Atlantic. This is going to be in five, six days from now. So uh, we've got time still to watch it. As uh, time moves on here and we go into next week, uh, we can see... Uh, definitely more support for a named system here near Puerto Rico, maybe north of Puerto Rico, possibly even going south. 
even uh, potentially something to keep an eye on here off of the Carolina coast. You can kind of see these two weaker features here and then the very clear signal for something in here. This is next Wednesday night and then maybe something behind it that could try to develop. Uh, again, that one I'm not quite as confident in, but I think something may form. As we go on into the following weekend, as you can see, there's all kinds of solutions. None of them is necessarily correct, uh, but you can see um, potential impacts of the weekend after next. If this does form and head into the Gulf, also potential impacts on the East Coast. And that's such a big spread right now, we just can't say for certain. Here's the other feature to keep an eye on, probably cutting up into a weakness in the ridge here between this high pressure and this high pressure. So that one, probably less of an issue down the road, but that could still change. So that is a look at uh, what we're seeing here. Just wanna kind of plot things out in time for you real quick from Weather Nerds. I do like this site, it gets kind of messy, but very clear to see not one, but two features here um, as we get into a week from today. Here's kind of the second feature. Here's the main one that we're watching now. There's a little bit of a signal for something in here and a little bit of a signal for something in here. These two, I just put a big question mark on. This one, I'd say, is likely this one half a check for now. How does that sound for everybody? So that's what we're going to be watching, at least for the coming 10 days. Uh, if we look at some deterministic model guidance, and again, I don't like to do this too much this far out because a lot can change, but the icon is a little bit aggressive here uh, with a system moving into the islands next Monday night, about six, to, six and a half days from now. And then the next wave coming behind it and something to keep an eye on behind that, but not really developing anything off the Southeast coast or in the Gulf. The pressures are low, but it's taken a while to get anything to form. Uh, looking at the Canadian model, again, not always the best of models, but it does show a system forming very slowly here, but maybe by the time it gets north of Hispaniola, as we get to about the fourth or fifth, we could have something approaching the Bahamas after that. The next wave behind it, taking its time with development, not showing development over the Gulf or over the Southeast coast. And the GFS model, which yesterday was very aggressive, kept this thing farther south, brought it up over Puerto Rico and threatened Bermuda as a hurricane, also showed low pressure forming in the Gulf, did not really develop the system behind it uh, due to the fact that this one, it was developing pretty strong. It actually had a subtropical system forming and moving up at the end of the weekend uh, into Newfoundland here. But that was yesterday's model. If we move forward to today's, as you can imagine, this GFS model takes an idea, runs with it. You can see uh, the development chances are, are definitely not there on this particular run. So I don't ever want to freak people to freak out. I do show the models. I think you guys need to know what's going on. But when I show you that inconsistency from the same model, two to three runs in a row, you'll see that it's very much a crapshoot at this point. So that's the Atlantic. We're going to be watching. Here's the Pacific. We've got uh, Tropical Storm Hona, uh, which is weakening over cooler waters, heading away from Hawaii. We've got Tropical Storm Gilma. I think it's still a hurricane, but it looks like a tropical storm. That is heading in the general direction of Hawaii, but the waters are cooler and there's wind shear out of the southwest, so it will weaken as it gets closer to Hawaii later in the weekend. Uh, this is Hona trying to go through a few more bursts, uh, leaving Hawaii and no threat to land, as you can see here. Should be a remnant low by the weekend. Here is Hurricane Gilma. Again, doesn't really look like a hurricane to me. If you look a little bit more closely, you can see the low-level center is here. All the convection is way off to the east of it. That is not a healthy-looking system and one that I think will be weakening significantly before it gets to Hawaii over the weekend. And you can see, yes, Hurricane Gilma aimed at Hawaii, but that's with a caveat. That's assuming this thing is even still alive at that point. And then another storm has formed. This is Hector. A few days ago, the model showed it becoming a hurricane. Now you can see Gilma's got some negative impact on it, producing wind shear. And we also have to keep an eye on the rest of the Eastern Pacific, but no threat to Mexico at this point. Just open water storms, which is what we love to see. Here's a look at Hector right now. You can see it's hanging on as a 50 mile per hour storm. Hector hanging on, actually 45 now at the latest advisory and unlikely to survive as it heads towards Hawaii. The remains may kick up the shower chances a little bit there, but no real threat at this point. Here's a broader view of what's going on in the Central Pacific. You can see one, two, three here, but everything falling apart and then nothing more to worry about at this point. So Hawaii's had its week of tropical season. Now it's over, it looks like for the time being. All right, here's a look at Shan Shan. This is a nasty storm. Take a look at how big that eye is. It's not moving very quickly and the forecast track is becoming more and more uncertain, which none of that is good news for anybody here. The islands here southwest of Japan are beginning to see hurricane force winds. This is Japan proper in here. 
and the storm is generally heading in the direction of southwest Japan, but the forecast is becoming less and less clear. This is the halves model, and you can see a very, trop a very strong storm, a strong typhoon, probably category three to four here, uh, approaching southwest Japan. Now, remember a few days ago, the landfall point uh, was supposed to be near Kyoto and Osaka in central Japan this time today as a powerful, strong category four, maybe even a category five typhoon. Now the forecast has shifted significantly due to the fact that high pressure is built into the Northeast leading to much less uh, of a significant steering. And you can see uh, Shanshan will weaken as it interacts with land, but the certainty here um, is extremely low. Now the forecast track on some of our models here, both the halves as well as the GFS, take the storm over the far southwest tip of Japan, but instead of riding it northeast across the entire island, which would be bad, you get a lot of wind and rain that way, um, you can see that the track of Shan Shan is extremely uncertain. We're talking about multiple loops. Uh, the GFS probably not going to play out this way, but it takes it back into warmer water and redevelops it into a Category 4 typhoon. The official forecast from the Joint Typhoon Center here does continue with that trend where it weakens over Japan and fades away, but the models say otherwise, that there's a decent chance that instead of going this way, the storm is going to linger and loop around and maybe eventually try to drift towards China. So not a good situation. If you're a praying person like I am, just pray for these folks. Um, it's going to be nasty for somebody. I just can't say with certainty who is going to have that level of um, just devastation, but I think it's going to be bad for some folks there, unfortunately. I hope you all have a wonderful Tuesday. Uh, I want to try and get back on here more. I'm in a crazy period of my life, but I really do appreciate your support. Uh, please consider becoming a subscriber and a member of my community and sharing with your friends as well. I thank you all for your time today. I give all the honor and glory to God and my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I thank him every day because every day is a blessing. Nothing is guaranteed. I don't care what you believe. Nothing is guaranteed. Uh, but if you do choose to accept Jesus like I have, then the one thing that I will say is guaranteed is that afterlife and that eternal life with our Savior, Jesus Christ. So every day we need to rejoice. Uh, Psalm 118.24 says, This is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Having that joy in my life is what drives me to continue to help serve others, to help you guys out, to pray for folks. And if you do have prayer requests, uh, please send them my direction. I will be happy to pray for you. Uh, I think a lot a lot of believers and maybe even non-believers or people that aren't Christian do do believe in prayer, but I think what we want to tend to do is pray when things are going badly for us and not to pray without ceasing and that to pray ceasing, not ceasing, ceasing, uh, but not to just continue to pray, whether it be the good prayers, the thankful prayers, or the ones when you're in despair. Uh, either way, despair or joy in your life, prayer is the answer. And I'm happy to pray for you no matter what your situation is today. But I know that you came here uh, and you were brought here by a divine power. You came to this channel to see this and hear this message, whether or not you've chosen to believe it. And I'm not going to judge you on that. Look, you're welcome here no matter what you believe. I care about you and I want you to know that and be encouraged and lifted up in my prayers. Hope you guys have a great day and we'll catch you again soon. God bless.